Good afternoon, Sam and Emma. This is John from San Antonio. John, I just remembered it's Tuesday. I'm so glad to hear from you. I had completely forgotten. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, I'll be okay. on the Letter Hacks. You, yeah, I'll be on the Letter Hacks YouTube channel tonight at 8 okay. p.m. Wow. Eastern Time mm-hmm. to talk about the upcoming elections with a focus on Senate and House races. Wait, wait. We'll be talking about. Okay. All right. We get it. We get where you're going to, we get the letter hack stuff. Butter us up first. You know, I, I was not on last week. I I missed your uh, last call. Did you miss that? I was, did did you wish I was here? Did you wish you got to talk to me? Yeah. Yeah. I've always, I've complimented you many times. Thank you. And uh, yeah. Thank you. I just, great addition. Thank you. I appreciate that. I just wanted to get that out of the way. So Sam doesn't get any compliments from you today. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, yeah, we'll be talking about the ranked choice voting also in uh, my attendance at the International Day of Peace celebration in El Paso, Texas. So, uh, well, 42 days until the election, even though the presidential race is extremely close, um, seeing a slight returning to the norm as compared to the margins in the 2020 election. In Pennsylvania, I have Harris up by 1.8, up 1.1 from last week. In North Carolina, Harris leads by 0.4, the same amount as it was last week. In Georgia, Trump leads by one point, up by 0.9. In Michigan, Harris leads by 2.8, up by 0.9 from last week. In Arizona, Harris leads by 0.6, up from 1.6 from last week. In Wisconsin, Harris leads by 2.5, down from by 0.5. In Nevada, Harris leads by two points, up by 0.7. So uh, next week I'll be going uh, to a two-week screen as opposed to a monthly screen. That, I've current, that I'm currently using, and that, that probably will help Trump in many ways. Uh, so the, the recent pattern is that uh, Harris, rate, Harris dominated Trump in the debate on September 10th, and then Republican bias polls came out that didn't fully emphasize uh, Harris's good performance at the debate. Then objective polls came out that did reflect uh, well on her, perform, her performance, and that's why uh, – Harris uh, peaked um, her on last Wednesday on 538 at 64% uh, chance of winning. Uh, now that polls uh, are reflecting that you know they don't have as fresh of a memory. Uh, now it's been two weeks away. I think the the polls are you know you're seeing a slightly uh, tightening again, and their winning percentage has dropped to 57%. On the website, uh, Race to the White House, the, the top forecaster of 2022, Logan Phillips, runs uh, has uh, Harris uh, peaking on Friday at 60.3%, and now uh, his forecast is at 59.9%. So last Wednesday, perhaps uh, I was too negative in reflecting on the Democratic chances of maintaining control of the Senate. Uh, Logan Phillips has uh, Republican chances peaking on September 10th, the day of the presidential debate, at 63.1 percent and has now dropped to 59.5. And though that number has uh, slowly dropped, the main source of good news is that uh, Texas Democratic candidate Colin Allred had a one-point lead in an objective uh, morning consult poll, which does uh, have a tendency to lean Democratic uh, like objective pollsters like uh, Emerson College and Redfield and Wilton lean Republican. Uh, Allred is only down uh, two points in my polling average, and that, that makes this race the tipping point race for control of the Senate. Uh, in another race the, that concerns uh, returning home uh, to the party that usually that, that they usually support, uh, Sherrod Brown's lead in Ohio has dropped to four points, and the last two valid polls have him up only by two points. There was an active vote uh, poll uh, that started polling in August and covered a month that I didn't include because the race it changes too much in that time period. Uh, but 
but it did have Republican uh, Bernie Marino up by two points over Sherrod Brown. There was a Republican-based poll that came out this morning that had uh, Republican Tim Sheehy up by seven in Montana, which probably indicates that it's actually about a four-point lead. Uh, I'd love to see more objective polls come out of uh, the Montana Senate race uh, you know, with John Tester and Tim Sheehy. Uh, Logan Phillips now has the Democrats with their highest uh, chance of winning the House at 62.9%. There's been several tight races in California that could determine who wins the House. Three uh, California universities combined forces to poll many of these races, and these polls were released this morning. In the 22nd District, a Democrat Rudy Salas leads uh, Republican David Valadeo by four points. Unfortunately, the sample size was only 263, so I'm a bit skeptical of this poll. Uh, John, let me ask uh, you this. As as we talk about uh, control of the House, uh, obviously there's pickup opportunities in California because uh, 2022 um, was uh, California Congress people underperformed on the Democratic side. Same too in New York. And um, have you heard uh, the story of Anthony DeEsposito? Uh, what specific story are you talking about? Okay, John, I guess you haven't. So allow me uh, to uh, let you in on what could end up uh, changing some of your uh, predictions in terms of uh, Congress. Incidentally, this is something that I know the letter hack would never do uh, <laughs> to help you uh, expand on your uh, knowledge base. But that's the way we work around here. Mm. Um Representative Anthony Diaz-Bazito, a New York uh, Republican, gave part-time jobs to both his lover and his fiancé's daughter, uh, which is in possible violation of health (laughs) ethics rules and also in violation of common sense. You don't want... Common decency, too? Well, common decency (laughs) as well. I mean, you don't want your fiancé's daughter... To be working in the same office as the woman that you're currently having an affair with, particularly when they both be recent hires, because it would be like, hey, I just got here. Oh, me too. What a coincidence in some weird way. Um, Traps abound. So shortly after taking the oath of office, the first term congressman hired his longtime fiance's daughter to work as a special assistant in his district office. Bumping her salary ultimately to thirty eight hundred a month. That's not bad work. Um, and then in April, Mr. D- Diaz-Bazito added uh, someone even closer to his payroll, a woman with whom he was having an affair, presumably cheating upon his uh, longtime fiance. Uh, according to four people familiar with the relationship. So uh, this was really undercover. Uh, the woman, uh, Devin Foss, collected 2000 a month for a part-time job in the same district office. The payments to both women stopped abruptly several months later in July of 2023, record show, around the time that Mr. D. Esposito's fiance found out about the relationship with Ms. Foss and briefly broke up with him. And uh, as you know, John, the House Code of Ethics prohibits uh, members of Congress from employing spouses or relatives, including stepchildren. And uh, he's lived with his fiance and apparently his fiance's daughter for quite some time. Also, uh, you can't engage in sexual relationship with any employee of the House who works under the supervision of the member. No pun intended. And uh, the experts uh, also said, like, these could be no show jobs as a way, which I think you should cut them some slack on because, you know, um, you don't want both of them showing up to work at the same time. Like I say, that's going to be problems. Now, dynamics here is former uh, Congressman George Santos weighing in on the decision (laughs) of uh, Nassau County's uh, Republican Party. Uh, in terms of like chastising him, remember, uh, George Santos got booted. The, the Republicans in Nassau County uh, basically abandoned him. And here, uh, the Nassau County uh, GOP says Nassau ra- residents are too smart to fall for the New York Times politically motivated and baseless mudslinging 
Uh, meanwhile, uh, George Santa says, oh, now it's mudslinging? I thought the New York Times was the Bible uh, because that's the one who reported on George Santos. Or was it only to take out the openly gay Republican? Oh. Republican. The hypocrisy is jarring. It is jarring. John, do you think this could impact um, control of the House? Sure. I mean, that, that okay. district is... Uh, uh, a 14.5 uh, Biden district, which is one of the, I think that's actually the the highest margin of any district. So that could be flipped uh, in a poll. It was a Democratic poll. Uh, Laura Guillen, the, the uh, candidate that's running against the Esposito, uh, was up by three points. And so, you know, it's, it's pretty much tied. Uh, and so, I mean, you know, that, that bad publicity probably will weigh on the race and that mm. could be a good pickup for the Democrats. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. And the, in the 27th district, the Democrat George, this is in California, Democratic George Whiteside is leading incumbent uh, Republican Mike Garcia by two points and the district that uh, Biden won by 12.4 points. You, do you want me to continue or? Well, let's um, let's uh, hold some of this. I mean, it's 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 been 10 minutes. I know I uh, filibustered you a little bit, but that was breaking news that you were not aware of. And I've basically uh you know, rounded out your presentation for the letter hack tonight. There's still some value in you tuning into this show, I guess, huh? Yeah, I mean, this, this show's great. I mean, uh, it's been very, uh, you know, I've been listening to this show for 10 years, calling in, a uh, big fan even before I called in, uh, fan, of, well, fan of the Peacock show and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you the were the fan of the yeah, Peacock show. You're laying show. on yeah. thick now, John. Um, I'm and hoping this internet lure. <laughs> there is an opportunity maybe to see John and now it's completely sold out. Uh, the, uh, election night, um, uh, bell house show. I warned people. I said it would sell out quick. It sold out in, I don't know, I guess under a week, seven days. If you include the fact that we only released it to the public, uh, like after day five. But um, hopefully, uh, maybe we'll see John there. I'm not going to make any promises to people. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm managing expectations, but we shall see. John, I look forward to hearing from you next week. And folks, of course, can listen to you tonight on the letter hack, where you will now be able to provide them with more information than you would have uh, prior to this call. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, John. Okay. Right, bye, John. Okay. Right, take care. Bye-bye. Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.